Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 135. Day 3135, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 135. We are in the process of solving practice test number one, which appears at the very end of the book, and we are on page number 356. Let me double check. Problem number 15 is what we are about to do. And problem number 15 appears actually on page number page number 357. Page number 357. Let me correct this thing in my notes before I forget. Page 357. Not 56. Not that it matters. You would have found it. Turn to page. Uh, turn to the book, please. Open the. Open your book to page number 357 and read the problem to yourself. The problem that I, that I'm about to put on the blackboard, because obviously I don't have a luxury of putting the entire problem, as it appears, verbatim. Uh, I don't have a luxury of putting the entire uh, uh, luxury of putting the problem in its entirety. You understand? So it's, here we are told to select all choices that applies. Some questions in the exam will ask you that where they will give you three, four, five, six, sometimes seven or eight choices. And any answer choice that works out, any answer choice that's correct, we have to mark all of them. Do you understand? This is a new type of questions that did not exist in the old GRE and back in the old days, or the good old days. But a few days, well, a few years ago they changed the format and now they have this. So let's look at the look, let's look at what the problem is asking. We are told that the total amount, total amount paid, total amount paid by Mary, the fact that it was paid by Mary, we really don't care about that, total amount paid by Mary was equal to the price of the of the good that she purchased, she bought something, I think, I think she bought a book, again it really doesn't matter what she bought, yes yeah, she bought a book, total amount she paid was the price of the book obviously, plus the 4% tax. In the locality where she is, in the municipality where she is, she only has to pay 4% tax. Lucky for her. So 4% sales tax, that is. You understand? We are further told, we are further told that uh, when she was rung up at the register, she paid, we are told that she paid with a $10 bill. These are the facts we know. These are the facts that are given to us. We are told, further we are told that after she paid, after she handed the $10 bill to the cashier, she received the change. She was given a change and we are told that her change was less than three dollars. We are not told how much change she got but we do know that it was less than three dollars. The question simply is which of the following which of the following statements which of the following statements And here's the next word, the most important word in this problem. It doesn't say which of the following statement may be true or could be true. Here it says which of the following statement must be true. And this is something we have to learn, pay, learn to pay attention to. They're not going to, in the real exam, put the word in the capital letter and underline it, underscore it like the way I just did it. They're not going to do it, obviously. Underscore. Yesterday we used these two words, moribund and then demarcate, and I couldn't find out the day when we learned it. Day number 12, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, search for GRE vocabulary words, day 12, and learn the word demarcate. What does it mean to underscore? What I said is that in the real exam, they're not going to put in the capital letter and underscore it like I just did. We just have to learn to pay attention to details, pay attention to every single word. Underscore, I'm looking for under you. See, I'm quick. Day number 12. Oh, same day as this one. What do you know? Coincidence. These are good, these are good words. These are good GRE words. GRE words are so called because they are GRE words. They appear over and over again. They have a tendency of appearing with regular frequency. And you have to master those words. Do you understand? If you, if you have any hope at all of getting a decent score, decent score in, the, in the verbal part. Let's carry on. Underscore simply means to emphasize. Underscore means to emphasize, to underline, to accentuate. 
to accentuate. You see, there's another good word, accentuate. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that if, if we learned about underscore, I'm almost 100% sure that we learned about accentuate on the same day because they're synonyms. So, which of the following statement must be true? Let's look at the first statement. The first statement says, the first statement says that the price, the price that she paid for the book was less than nine dollars and fifty cents. Is it nine dollars and fifty cents? Price, yes, nine dollars and fifty cents. Let's find out if it is, if that is something that has to be true, that must be true. Again, we need the room, so I'm going to raise everything now. Very straightforward deal here. She went in the bookstore, she bought a book, she handed ten dollar bill with the understanding that she's going to pay obviously the price of the book, whatever it says in the back, plus the four percent. The cashier rung her, rung her up, handed her the change, she walked out the store. When she walked out, she realized that her change was less than three dollar. Question simply is, what is the... The question simply is, is this necessarily true? Is it, is it true that the price of the book must have been less than 950 based on what we know? So let's erase this thing, we need the room. Let's work through it, shall we? The quickest, the simplest way is to figure out what 9, 950 plus the 4% of 950 is, okay? You can do it any way you like. You can sit there, you can sit there and pick up your calculator and do and figure out uh, 1.04 times 950 if you like. It's up to you. you. Or you can do it manually, 950 times 104 and figure it out. I'm not going to do either of those, I'm just going to do it out here. 950 was the price. And the sales tax is 4%. Can you tell me what is 1% of 950? Let's make it simpler. If it were exactly $9, can you tell me what is 1% 1 of $9? 1% of $9 is 9 cents. Because 1% of, of $1 is 1 cent. If 1% of $1 is 1 cent, it stands to reason that 1% of $9 should be 9 cents. We don't have $9, we have $9.5. We have a $9.5. So 1% would represent nine and a half cents. Nine and a half cents is one percent. Nine and a half cents is another one percent. Nine and a half cents is another one percent. Nine and a half cents is another one percent. There we go. I have my four percent. One percent, one percent, one percent. Half plus half plus half, that's two. That's two pennies. And nine for the thirty-six. Thirty-six plus two is thirty-eight. Thirty-eight plus fifty is eighty-eight. No, this this the statement was the statement was what was understand what the, what we are saying here. The statement claimed the statement claimed that the price was less than nine fifty. What did we just prove here? What did we just show? What we just showed here, what we just showed here is this. What we just showed here is that price could have been could have been nine less than nine fifty. Or it could very well have been equal to 950. Because had the price been exactly equal to 950, had the price been exactly equal to 950, she would have paid $9.88. She would have been given the change of 12 cents. When she came out of the store, she checked her cents and says, Oh, I got changed less than $3. Of course, her change is less than $3. What, do we, what did we prove here? We proved here that the price did not need to be. We proved here the price does not need to be less than 950. It could have been less than 950. It could have been less than 950, but it could very well have been equal to 950. But that's not what it says. It, that's not what it says here. It says it's less than 950. Therefore, that statement is wrong. As a matter of fact, the part that we are about to do, that I'm about to start, is not part of the exam. We are done. It's statement one is wrong. We, in the real exam, we just move on with our lives. Do you understand? This is not a real exam. We are here to learn. So we're going to analyze it a little bit more. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I want you to understand that the price could have been as high as 960, and it would still work. Do you know why? Do you know why? Here's the reason why. Look, if I if I buy something for 10 cents, listen very carefully. If I buy something with 10 cents, and I tell you that I have to pay 10% tax where I live, I have to pay 10% tax. So if you buy something for 10 cents. What is your tax? Your, your tax will be one cent. What if the what if the sales tax is nine percent? Your, your your sales tax would be nine tenth of a penny. 
and because it's nine tenth of a penny, they're going to round it up to the whole penny, and you'll still pay eleven cents. As long as sales tax is more than six, more than five percent. If your sales tax is six percent, then if you buy something for ten cents, your sales tax is going to be six tenth of a penny. And they're going to round round up the six tenth because it's more than half, half a penny, and you're going to end up paying one whole penny. But if the sales tax is less than five percent, if it's only four percent. On the last 10 cents, you go scot free. You won't have to pay any tax on the last 10 cents because, because 4% of 10, 10, 10 cents is 4 tenths of a cent. They cannot collect 4 tenths of a cent. They cannot round up 4 tenths to, to a whole penny. So the state will have to forego the 4 tenths. Do you understand? That's what we're dealing with here. The sales tax we are told is 4%, which means even if the price were to go up by another 10 cents, even if the price were to go up by another 10 cents, instead of 9.50, even if the price were 960, she would still be okay. She would still get a change. She would still get a change because her total in that case is the same price that we paid before plus another 10 cents. So she'll still end up paying $9.98. And she'll still walk out with the change in her hand, two shiny pennies. And she will exclaim and say, oh my God, my change is less than $3. Do you understand? It would still work. So for us to claim that the price is less than 950 is wrong. It could be equal to 950 as we just found out, or it could be as high as 960. It could be as high as 960. But the second part that we did was not necessary. Let's move on to the second statement. So the first statement is, is not correct. First statement is not correct. Let's look at the second statement. I know this business of rounding up with a penny, if, it is, if you buy something for 10 cents, and I know the rounding up the business because where I live, I live in the state of Connecticut, and instead of Connecticut, the sales tax is, well, it used to be six and a quarter percent, but then the state got greedy, and now the sales tax in the state of Connecticut is 6.35 percent. Point is more than 5 percent. So when we buy something for 11 cents, the, the sales tax on the 11 cents, how much will be the sales, sales, sales tax on 10 cents, do you know? The sales tax on, on ten cents, on, on ten cents would be this many cent, six thirty-five divided by one thousand. In, in other words, the sales tax would be 0.635 cents because sales tax is six and six point three five percent. But they cannot collect 0.635 of a penny. But because it's more than half, we end up paying the whole penny. Anyway, that was a little digression for no good reason. For absolutely no good reason. Do you understand? You can file it under, he was just babbling. That's the heading of the file. Price of the book must have been more than 9690, they are told. In the second statement, he says that the price of the book must have been price must have been more than 960. Well, let's find out what would happen if the price were exactly 960. If we can find out that the price was exactly 960 works, then that statement is wrong. Because they're claiming the price is more than 960. Let's, let's find out what would happen if the price were exactly 690 rather, not 960. Uh, I meant to say 690. It says, second statement says, let me read it in the book one more time. It said the price of the book was greater than 9, and I keep saying 960. The price of the book was greater than 690, they say. Let's find out what, ha what would happen if it were exactly 690. And if we can prove that 690 works, then that statement is wrong. So let's multiply this thing by 4%. Uh, 4%. In other words, 104%. Let's find out what that is very, very quickly, okay? 4 times 0 is 0. 9 fours are 36. 6, carry 3, 6 for the 24, 24 plus 3 is 27, hold the, hold the unit digit, then we are multiplying, then we are multiplying with a big fat 0, if we multiply by big fat 0, we are going to have to hold on the digit, which is the tenth digit, and then we simply multiply by 1, if we multiply by 1, we get 690, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, what does this say? Okay. Understand it, what, is, what it says is that, if the price if the price is six dollars and ninety cents, then the total amount that we'll end up paying is seven dollars and again you see it's 
seven dollars and one point seven six cents. They cannot collect seven points because it's more than five. They're going to round it up to eight. So this is how much you will end up paying. If it turns out, if it turns out that the price is six ninety exactly, if the price, if the price is exactly six ninety, if the price is exactly six ninety, then that implies that you will end up paying seven dollars and eighteen cents with the tax. And if you end up paying seven dollars and eighteen cents with the tax, what are you going to walk out with for your change? Well, you will walk out of the store for your change with an amount that is going to be less than three dollars which is exactly what the book says, which is exactly what the problem says, that your change was less than three dollars. What we just proved here is that this works. I am able to walk out of the store with a change less than three dollars, not equal to three dollars, not more than three dollars. My change was not more than three dollars. My change was less than three dollars. In other words, a price of six ninety just works. But they're claiming, they're claiming that the price had to be more than six ninety. That statement is no good. That, that, that statement is no good. This statement is no good. Do you understand? Before we go to the third statement, let's, before we go to the third statement, let's solve the same problem instead of doing this in a roundabout way in a childish manner, indirect manner, let's do it properly. Properly, algebraically. I want you to understand how to do it algebraically. Do you understand? Now, keep in mind that we are told, we are told that our change is greater than three dollars. Is it greater than or, or less than? I forget now. Just give me one second here. I received the correct change which was less than three dollars. Sorry. The change was less than three dollars. Which means, which means that the total amount that we paid total amount that we paid has to be more than seven dollars. If the price, if total amount that you paid, total amount that you paid is more, you see, total amount, this is the total amount, if it's more than seven dollars, that in turn will imply that your change is less than three dollars. And the total amount that you paid also has to be less than ten dollars. It has to be less than ten dollars because you handed a ten dollar bill and you got, got some change back. If you handed a ten dollar bill, and you receive some change back, which means the total amount, including the tax, the price and the tax, has to be less than $10. That's, how, that's the only way you're going to get the change back. At this point, so if you want to find the price, if you want to find the price, the price, the price, because, the, because we know, because we know that the that this tax is 4%, the price would have to be 7 divided by 1.04 and 10 divided by 1.04 and at this point I'm not going to try to do this out by hand 7 divided by 1.04 you can pick up the calculator and you can figure it out yourself and what you will find is that it comes out to be six dollars and seventy three cents the highest price that you could pay it's nine dollars and sixty-one cents, nine, not nine dollars and sixty cents that we found a little while ago when we were doing it manually. As a matter of fact, it can go even penny more. It can go even penny more because, if you recall, in that scenario, we we walked out of the store with two pennies. The change has to be less than three dollars, which means the absolute minimum change that I can walk out with is a penny. Even if I walk out of the store with just one penny in my hand, the change is less than three dollars. So price could as, actually be as high as nine dollars and sixty-one cents. Well, not exactly. It's not. It's not equal to. But it's somewhere in between. This is the range, which is why the first statement was wrong. First statement claimed that the price had to be. First statement claimed that the price had to be less than 950. The price does not have to be less than 950. It has to be less than 961, 960 actually. And the second one says that the price had to be more than 690. Price can. Price doesn't have to be more than 690. Price could be as less than, as low as six six dollars and seventy four cents. Six dollars and seventy-four cents, and if you multiply, multiply six dollars and seventy-four cents by one point zero four, you will see that you will walk out of the store with the change of less than three dollars. Let's answer the last statement. Enough of this thing. Too much talk, my God. But in the real exam, of course, you have to be able to do this thing on your own very quickly. Because very rarely they give you a half an hour to do one problem. Okay, what does the third statement say? 
it says the sales tax was less than 45. Sales tax, let's just call it P, P, well, T was less than 45 cents. T was less than 45 cents. So we just found out, we just found out that maximum price that we can pay is 961. If the maximum price that we paid is 961 and we only handed her a dollar, we only, oh sorry, we, we handed her $10 bill. If we, if we handed a $10 bill, if, if we handed a $10 bill, and the maximum amount that you can go is 961, that implies that tax has to be less than 39 cents. Tax has to be less than 39 cents. So is it correct to, is it correct to say that tax must have been less than 45 cents? Of course, tax, it is okay to say, it is correct to say that a tax has to be less than 45 cents, because as a matter of fact, it has to be less than 39 cents. Do you understand? Sales tax has to be less than, that's the maximum tax. This is the maximum tax. Maximum tax that they can collect is 39 cents in this scenario. Because the highest price that we can pay is 961. On 961, if you pick up a calculator and multiply it by 1.04, you will, or rather 0.04, you will see it's 39 cents. That's the most, most tax we can pay, given the, given the condition that we must be able to walk out of the store with at least one shiny penny in our hand. We have to have some change because the problem says that we have to have change in the amount of less than three dollars. So we must have cents. Zero, zero, zero change will not count. Walking out and proudly saying that I have a change of zero cents will not count. Do you understand? So that's it. So what we found out that the statement one does not work, the statement two does not work, but statement three is just fine. The statement three is just fine. And therefore, as the answer choices are listed here, the answer is C. Answer to this problem is C. And let's look at the percentile. So you will understand why it took so long. Because this is not the sort of problem which was meant for everybody. This was meant for people who are going to score a really high score in the math portion. Do you understand? Only 18%. Only 18% of people got it right. Almost four-fifths. Actually, not almost four-fifths. More than four-fifths of the people. More than 80% of the people had trouble with this question. Tomorrow we'll do the next problem, which is just as nasty, which is just as bad, problem number 16, which is just as bad. Let's, let's, let's quickly take a look at, well, actually almost, almost, almost as bad, because this one, this one was 18 percent, the percentile was 18. The next one we're going to do tomorrow, problem number 16, only 19 percent got it right. So it's up there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And again, tomorrow we'll only do that problem and nothing else, okay? Bye now.